He's Alive, starring Peter Mark Richmond and Marshall Allman, with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Roger Mueller, Jason Bradley, Christian Stolte, Doug James, Jeff Lupiton, Amanda Amari, Elizabeth Lido, Vince Amari, Alex Sopner, Frenette Lebo, Carl Amari, Kurt Nabig, Peggy Roeder, and Jason Mallow. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Jason Mallow for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. That looks like a good spot. Where? Up ahead, on the corner. Yeah, we'll set up some boxes. I don't know. It's perfect, I tell you. All these people taking a walk after dinner, they'll listen. Oh, they'll listen, all right. Just hand out the pamphlets for now. I have to work on my speech. What speech? You don't need one. Just say it the way you say it to us. These people, they don't know what we stand for. So tell them, Pete. We'll make sure they listen. Put the flag up against the building. Which one? Both of them. Ours and Old Glory. The big two. There's some boxes. You can stand on them. I'll go set them up. Man, oh man, this is gonna be the night, huh, Pete? Well, I guess it's now or never. Got that right. How's my uniform look? Here, straighten your tie. The cap, the boots, perfect. You look like a leader. Big time. Go, Pete. Give him a dose of the truth. Hey, mister. Excuse me, little girl. Are you in the army? No army you ever heard of, sweetheart, but you will. My daddy's a lieutenant. Are you a lieutenant? Better than that, kid. A lot better. Now stand back. You're in the way. <clears throat> Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening, neighbors. I... I have something of great importance to tell you. If, if, um, if, if you, you all get, gather around. Neighbors? Who's neighbors? Yeah, we're not your neighbors. I never saw him around here. Yeah, me neither. Look at those crazy outfits they're wearing. Yeah, they look like real idiots. Uh, I, I bring you a message that you'll all want to hear. What are you selling? Vegetable choppers? Because I already bought one. I, it's... <laughs> yeah. Well, hear, hear me out, folks. Hey, what's with the goopy play? Yeah, it's got lightning bolts on it. Well, maybe they're looking for a few good men for Halloween. I, I want to talk to you about international communism and, and the secret masters of the World Bank. I'm not joking, neighbors. Do you know who's really behind it? Look, look, look at our economy. It's falling apart. It's, it's because of the bankers. That's, that's right. The economics of the world, now, then, and forever, have always been the breeding ground for a certain type. An insidious type. The worshippers of the golden calf, whose religion is gold. Whose loyalty, first and foremost, is to money. And only money. And, and we know who, we know who loves money more than anyone else, don't we? We know what tribe. He's just getting warmed up. Yep, in a minute he'll have him in the palm of his hand. The tribe of traitors. And they're here, in our homeland. They're in Washington. Those swine have captured the reins of government. Yeah, they're rotten apples, and I got an apple for you. Hey, knock it off, people. Yeah, show some respect. I'm talking about traitors. Listen. Boring, boring. Ice cream. Get your ice cream. I want one. 
Come on, Angie. We'll both get one. Then we'll go home. Yeah, there's nothing happening here. No, 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 no. Listen to this. What about, what about foreigners? Huh? Foreigners. Take a look at the way that they're controlling us. The lines lead directly to Palestine. And, and, to, to the Vatican. Yeah, I've had about enough of this. Let's go. It's a conspiracy, I tell you. A conspiracy of men who aren't like us. Yellow men, brown men, black men. They come here and they infiltrate our economy. They're right here on our doorstep. If there's anybody sitting on your doorstep, buddy, it's the man in the white coat. Here, take a tomato with you. You think that's pretty funny, don't you? You think it's funny that your country can be sold out? That they can sell out your flag and your birthright? You think that's funny, huh? Well, the day will come. Oh, shut up. Let him talk. What's the matter? No more big talk? He's just a scrawny kid with a big mouth. Real big. As long as he got a couple of punks to protect you. We gotta do something. Where's Nick? Go on. Get out of here. Back off. This here's a real American. Yeah, a real jerk. Why, you? Get out! Cut it off! Portrait of a Bush League Fuhrer named Peter Volver, a young man who feeds off his self-delusions and is left perpetually hungry. Like his goose-stepping predecessors, he searches for something to explain this hunger, to rationalize why the world passes him by without saluting. In his own twisted and distorted lexicon, he calls it faith, strength, truth. But the particular brand of truth he seeks can be found in any sewer. Peter Vollmer doesn't know it yet, but he is about to ply his trade on another corner, an intersection in a strange shadowland called the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story, He's Alive, starring Marshall Allman and Peter Mark Richmond, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. All right, folks, break it up. Party's over. Yeah, what's happening here? Looks like the boys in the brown shirts took a licking. No, we got them. We got them good. Then what are you lying on the ground for? Problem, fellas? It was the communists. The communists did this. What? Which ones are those, Jack? All of them. They ran away like cowards. We want to press charges. What about names? We need names if we're going to charge anybody. Look, forget about it. We can take care of ourselves. Sure you can. You need some medical attention? No. We don't need your help. Come on, Peter. I'll help you up. Let's get out of here. Hey, Jack. You forgot your flag. Yeah, your mama made it for you. Give it to me. Sure, sure. There'll come a day when guys like you will crawl on your belly to salute this. There'll come a day. Yeah, well, let me know the date, Jack, so I can stay home sick. Hey, Pete! Pete! Are you okay? Yeah, we're fine. What are you doing in the alley? They cornered me. Must have been eight, uh, ten guys on top of me. It was all I could do to get away. You sure that's what happened? Yeah, sure, I'm sure. Oh, mean crowd, Pete. Y you get a hot night, and you always get a mean crowd. Remember when I was telling you that? Uh, remember when I was telling you that every time you get a hot night? All right, all right. Okay, Pete. Okay. Why? I tried. And I tried hard up there tonight, but I couldn't get through. I couldn't get them to listen. Words never come out right. You did good. Real good. Someday they'll listen. They'll have to. They'll listen and they'll cheer. Someday they will, Pete. You'll see. Someday. Now, hold still. Ah. Ah. <laughs> it's 
totally a, only a cut, not a mortal wound. Wash your face when you get home and put some iodine on it. I think you will survive. Now, do you want a cup of coffee? I'd rather have a drink. A drink, is it? May I have a drink, Ernst? I have some wine. Will that do? Yes, please. Very well. You are a man now. Thank you. Uh, Peter, one sips wine. That's not beer from a beer garden. <laughs> Sorry. I'll remember that next time. The next time. Just how many next times do you suppose a human being has in the scheme of things? <laughs> oh, come on, don't lecture me, Ernst. I'm sick, I'm tired, and I took a beating out there. Did you? Yeah, can I stay the night? Yeah, the couch remains in the corner, as usual. You're a good friend, Ernst. You understand. Sad to say, I do. A man does what he believes in. A man usually does. I believe in certain things. Is that right? You know I do. I mean, we're friends. You've known me since I was a kid. When you were a little kid, Peter, and I used to find you crying at my door late at night, I could pity you then. And now? What do you think? Now you peddle hate on street corners as if it were popcorn. It's not hate. It's a point of view. A philosophy. Oh, I know the philosophy. I know it quite well. Nine years in a place called Dachau. And you know who put me there? Peter Vollmer. What? A lot of Peter Vollmers. Frustrated men, sick men, hungry men. But the result, the effect, never mind the cause, was 12 million bodies in shallow graves. And it all started with young men in uniforms, talking on street corners. Hey, you let me come here. You never sent me away. No, I never did. I never do. That's uh, the weakness that you scream about on your street corner. The sentimentality. The softness. The weakness that makes a man his brother's keeper. So I must be one of the worst of your criminals, Peter. Sentimental, soft, and very preoccupied with my brother's. I should close the door on you, but perhaps this is my sickness. I... I only see the boy, not the man. Go ahead. Sleep on my couch. Look! Why don't you understand? You're the only person in the world I ever had. What else have I had? What? A drunk father who used to throw me against the wall? An old lady who drank till she had no marbles in her head. She didn't even recognize me half the time. That's why, that's why I used to come over here to your apartment because, I mean, you were gentle with me, you know? You'd talk to me. You'd feed me. You'd take care of me. Ernst, you're, you're my real father. Ah, this is the boy speaking again. The little boy with so much fear in him. Yeah, you rest now, Peter. You rest well. No. 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 What? What? Peter! Who's that? Peter. Who's out there? Who is it? A friend, Mr. Bullman. A friend? 
You have need of friends, yeah. allies. Yeah, come downstairs, Mr. Former. Come down and we'll talk, you and I. Hello, Mr. Former. I heard people out here. Oh, did you? And your voice. Well, a dream, perhaps, of better days to come. Who are you? Take a good look. Do you not recognize me? Surely you have seen my picture. Wait. That hair. With the mustache. No. <laughs> I can't be. You, you died a long time ago. Did I? Or perhaps I only wanted people to think so. <laughs> but you, you were a, you're a great man. I am aware of your opinion. How did you know where to find me? I simply followed your tears, Mr. Foreman. You said you have something to talk about? I, I do. I do indeed. I have you to talk about, and the things you believe in, which are the things I believe in as well. See, your success, Mr. Volmer, will be my success. Are you interested? I am. I, I am. Uh, please go on. Ah, good. Then let us start by discussing a most important point. What are the dynamics of a crowd? Hmm? How do you move them? Mr. Volmer, how do you excite them? How do you make them feel as one with you? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know, sir. How? <laughs> Join them first, Mr. Volmer. Yeah? When you address them, speak as if you were a part of the mob. Speak to them in their language, on their level. Make them hate the things you hate. How do I do that? Well, if they are poor... Talk to them about poverty. If they are afraid, talk to them about their fears. And if they are angry, Mr. Former, ah, if they are angry, give them objects for their anger. But most of all, what is most of the essence is that you make the mob an extension of yourself. Say to them things like, uh, yeah, uh, things like this. They call us hate mongers. They say we're prejudiced. They say we're biased. They say we hate the minorities. The minorities. Understand the term, neighbors. Minorities? Shall I tell you who the minorities are? Shall I? We are. We are the minorities. That way, Mr. Vorma. You started that way. Uh, I, uh... I think I understand. That's <laughs> right. Um. <clears throat> Neighbors. Neighbors. They call us hate mongers. That's it. That's it. More. They say we're prejudiced. They say we're biased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have got it. Go on. The minorities understand the term, neighbors. The minorities. Shall I tell you who the minorities are? We, we, we are the minorities. Because patriotism is the minority. Because love of country is the minority. Because to live in a free white America seems to be a minority opinion. Let me tell you something, neighbors. I want you to dwell on this. Just, just dwell on it. Once we had an atom. Suddenly, the Russians had it. We wanted to send men into space, but it was the Russians who got there first. We had a hydrogen bomb. It was the Russians who exploded theirs. Who gave them the bombs? Who sold us out? Who stabbed us in the back? Well, if it's the minority opinion that we must survive, then we are the minority. And this minority will not stop until it's the majority. This minority will not give up the fight. No, this is the promise. And this is the legacy.
Look, I'm not gonna wait much longer, you understand? Gibbons, cool it. Pretty good crowd tonight, huh? Great crowd, and you were great, Pete. I mean it. <laughs> Thanks, Stanley. They're finally responding. Responding? You had them right where you want them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this here is my hall. You've been renting it all this time, but I ain't got the money yet. Hey, can't you see we're busy? <laughs> okay, boys. I'll put it to you this way. If I don't get paid right now, you don't have the hall tomorrow night. You got that? I'll go count the donations. What's the problem? Oh, this is a hungry man here, Pete. He's got to have his shekels. You know the type. I told you guys you're three weeks behind on the rent. You said you'd give it to me a week ago, and all I got was a cigarette butts on the floor. After tonight, that's it. Excuse me. Am I to understand that you're going to lock us out of this meeting hall because of a couple weeks' lousy rent? Oh, you understand right. Six hundred bucks due. Six hundred bucks that ain't been received. We happen to be a young movement. We're still struggling. We need time to grow. I don't rent time. I just rent the hall. It's the money. Or you put up a soapbox in the street. A soapbox in the street? What do we do, Pete? We gotta do something. I don't see why we have to tiptoe around this guy. Why don't I just educate him? Hey, look, Frank, I don't know. I don't know. Why don't you just hold on a second? I can do it, guaranteed. Well, I know you can't, Frank. Somebody left this for you, Pete. Who? Nobody saw him. Just left this envelope at the back door. Your name's on it. <laughs> There's... There's money inside. Six C notes. Hey, how about that? We need 600 bucks, and here it is. Oh, man, how about that? Hey, Gibbons, come and get it. Yeah, it's about time. You satisfied? Then don't bother us. All right, all right. You're paid up through this week. Where'd the dough come from, Pete? You have any idea? We must have a secret supporter. I can see why. You were really something tonight. I can't even tell you how it sounded. You had him. You really had him. Hey, we're gonna make it. And now something tells me we're really gonna make it. You bet your life. You guys go on. I'll see you outside. Sure, Pete. Anything you say. Excellent performance, Mr. Fulmer. Yes, yeah, very effective. Very effective. You learn quickly. <laughs> well, thank you. I didn't know you were here. I am always here. Please, to be of help. Uh, you learned the style very well. You delivered it precisely as I told you. Well, I'm very obliged. And the money? Oh, it was the least I could do. We couldn't have you thrown out into the streets. Yeah. <laughs> I happen to feel that your work is very important. You're with us? With you? Oh, Mr. Vollmer, you might say, I am you. Now, I have some suggestions. I'll continue to give you speeches, but there's a matter of importance that must be taken care of. What is it? An expedient, Mr. Vollmer. Oh, you might call it a cause libre. <laughs> Something to cement the organization together. I, I don't understand. The organization needs a martyr. A martyr? Mm -hmm. How do we find a martyr? Uh, <laughs> you don't find one, Mr. Fulmer. <laughs> you choose one. You pick out the one of least value, and you make him a symbol. You wrap him in a flag, and you make his death work for you. Find a man, Mr. Fulmer, who has no worth while he's alive, but who can serve you in his death. Like who? Oh, surely there is such a one. Pete, uh, they're waiting. Uh, be right, be right there, Nick. Okay. Thought I heard voices. You, you talking to somebody? No, no. Just, I'm just practicing my next speech. Look. Hey, tell Frank to come in here, would you? Right away. Alone. Sure thing, Pete. Hmm, a 
an excellent choice, Mr. Former. The little fat one. <laughs> yeah. Now all you have to do is arrange it. The only thing is, I I've known Nick for a long time. I isn't there some other way? Other way? There is no other way, Mr. Former. And if you weaken now, there's no point in going on. When Frank comes back, tell him you've discovered an informer. Tell him the informer has done you irreparable damage. The informer must be put out of the way, but cleverly, subtly, so that there is some question as to who is responsible. But Nick's been with us from the beginning. The beginning? <laughs> no, Mr. Fulmer. None of you were at the beginning. None of you. Nick's my friend. And this is an act of friendship. We are allowing him to serve the cause. How glorious for him. Nick says you wanted to see me. We, um, we got a stoolie in the group, Frank. A stoolie? Yeah. Nick. Nick's been talking. And I think he's working for the police. No. I know it to be a fact. Everything we've done, everything we've said, Nick snitched on us. Are you sure? Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Well, what do you want to do, Pete? Get rid of him. Get rid of him so... so that it looks like, um, somebody else did it. Make it, make it look like, uh, someone who hates us. I understand. I understand, Pete. You call it, you got it. There you are, officers. Thank God. Stay calm, ma'am. Now just tell us, where's this body? Over here, in the alley. Shine your flashlight on it. Look at all that blood. Somebody did quite a number on him, huh? I've seen him before. It's one of those young hooligans. You can tell by the uniform. He's dead, all right. Call a meat wagon. What was this one's name? Wait a minute. There's a note pinned to his chest. What does it say? A good fascist. What do you suppose that means? One of their enemies must have put it there. After he beat him to death. Yeah, but which enemy? There's <laughs> a lot of them around here. Fewer and fewer every day. Hurry up, Frank. We've been waiting for you. Is it done? Cross off the little creep. Anything else? Then, we finally have our martyr. Pete, you better go on. They're going nuts in there. It's a good crowd tonight? Right to the ceiling. What's the matter, Stanley? Oh, uh, nothing. Then why the look? It's just that... Nick was a nice guy, Pete. I miss him. Stanley, you listen to me. You forget about Nick right now. He was a fat pig with no guts. He was a greasy big mouth who copped out every time he took a breath. A nickel and dime Judas who got exactly what he deserved. So don't mourn for Nick. He doesn't rate mourning. Not that pig. You got that, Stanley? Look at me, Stanley. You got that? Yeah. You have his poster ready? Blown up bigger than life. Just like you said. Good. When I give the signal, unveil it behind the podium. All right, everyone, I have something very important to say. A man of honor has died tonight. A decent, courageous fighter for the cause of freedom. He gave his life. He gave his life for us. Some skulking assassin murdered him. But friends and neighbors and co-fighters, 
Nick Bloss did not die in vain. They stilled his great heart, but they could not stifle his memory. They could not obliterate his courage. They could not wipe away his honor. He lives, my friends. He lives in you, and he lives in me. He lives deep in the gut of any human being who believes that the United States of America should be free, should be untainted, should be free from the mongrels who try to enslave it. Now, Stanley, look at this portrait of Nick Bloss in his uniform. He wore it proudly. He died for it. And you and I, neighbors, we will live for it! Oh, hiya, Mr. Gans. Uh, how do you do? How are you tonight? Uh, I'm very sober, unfortunately. Beer? Yeah, if you please. Boy, listen to him across the street. Guy's got a voice on him. And I knew it when it was only a whimper. That's a wild kid, that one. Used to be people would laugh at him, but lately he gets the crowd. And not many people laugh now. Say, you know him, don't you? Yeah, since he was a child. A silent little boy with very little to say. But now, I've been here before. Oh, yes. I've seen and heard it all before. That was another time, Mr. Gans. Another place. Another kind of people. That stuff doesn't go here. That's what we said, too. They were brown shirt scum. Temporary insanity. Part of the passing scene. Too monstrous to be real. So we ignored them. Or laughed at them. Because we couldn't believe that there were enough insane people to march for their cause. And then, one morning, the country woke up from an uneasy sleep and there was no more laughter. The Peter Volmers had taken over. The wild animals had changed places with the zookeepers. Another one, Mr. Gans? Ah, no, thank you. I've had... I have had my fill. You take it easy now. You're not going to do anything foolish, are you? Me? Not this time. It mustn't happen again. We can't let it. We simply can't let it happen again. All the anguish, all the horror, all the nightmare. No, no, no. no. Not this time. Mr. Gans? Mr. Gans! And so I tell you, my friends, we will take it to the streets. There's going to be a big meeting tomorrow night with searchlights and banners and drums and armbands. For every one of you who wants to join us, we have armbands. And soon, very soon, we will have uniforms for all of you. When we march, when we march! Who's that? Search me. Go on, Mr. Volma. You were saying? Ernst, what are you doing here? I can tell them what you were saying. I have heard it all before. I have heard it a thousand times before. In Munich, in Berlin, on a hundred different street corners. It was drivel then, and it is drivel now. Ernst, you've got to stop. And uh, what is this one here? The latest model? A new Führer right off the assembly line? Well, this one isn't so new. He is just a cheap copy. Oh, let me tell you about this one. About the breed, the species. They are all alike. 
<laughs> Problem children with delusions. Sick, sad neurotics who need applause like a needle. <laughs> That's enough, Ernst. Please. Please. Listen to me, Peter. And let them listen. Or I will tell them about a quaking, whimpering boy who cried on my couch, who still cries on my couch. Ernst, don't! They need parades and torchlights and slogans like therapy. They need uniforms and armbands because without them they are naked and pitiful. This one grew too old to bite his nails, so he made believe he could lead others. Pete, don't let him have the mic. Put him down or I'll put him down. Yeah, yeah, put me down, Peter. Shut me up. Stifle me, huh? Why don't you? Why can't you? Because, because this is your courage right here. The symbol on your sleeve. A torch on a lightning bolt. A crude drawing for children. I'm warning you, Ernst. This patch is your strength. This and the crowds and the sick aisles. And if I tell you to your face, Peter, that your courage is made out of cloth, that your ideas are filthy garbage, and that you are something less than a man. What do you say to that? How do you answer me? Like this! Oh, the rebuttal. The only answer your kind knows how to give. Is that the best you can do? A bloody nose? This is your Führer? He is yours. I given to you a gift from the sewers. You see, folks, the way, the way it is. Hey, Pete, don't worry about it. It's just an old man. One crummy old man. The way it is, I knew him. I knew the old man once. Is that a fact, Mr. Former? Yes, that is a fact. I used to know him. And... Who's he talking to? Mr. Former! I have no interest in who he is. My concern is in what he is. He cheapened you in front of these people. You barely had the strength to strike him. Uh, a slap. Like a woman. Your voice is like a lion. But your instincts are a rabbit's. And you? Instincts like a rabbit, slap like a woman. You, you stand in the darkness and plan the battles. But you're never there when they're fought. No, no. Why don't you come up here alongside me, huh? Why don't you let them see who you really are? Why don't you make a speech? Mr. Fulmer, I was making speeches before you knew how to read them. I was fighting battles when you were struggling to get out of a womb. I was taking over the world when your universe was a crib. And as for my standing in the darkness, Mr. Fulmer, I invented darkness. Then you take the stick. Go on. It's all yours. He... Pete, who were you talking to? Where are you going? You can't run out. Ernst! Ernst! Where are you? Let me explain! You! Why? Why did you pick me? I didn't pick you, Mr. Former. You picked me. You chose my ideas. You invoked my name. So now, you must take whatever comes with it. What? In the past, I've given you suggestions. Now, I give orders. Orders? What do you want me to do? From now on, you must be built of steel. No soft gaps of sentiment. Steel, Mr. Fulmer. The way we handled Nick and the mobs and the speeches. 
And gradually, bit by bit, we shall forge something strong, something powerful, just as I did before, with my own hands, with my own hands. The old man, the Jew, he'll be back again tomorrow night, the next night. I know him. I know the type. We sent them into the ovens. But always, oh, always, there was a handful left to point a finger. His kind, Mr. Volmer. His kind are dangerous. See, they talk, they think, they plant seeds, they hold us back. Here. Take, take, take this. What is it? What do you think? A Luger 9mm pistol. My personal sidearm. Kill him. Kill the old man. Kill Ernst? Tonight, he will be in his room. If you are man enough. If you are steel. All right. I'll do it. I'll do it now. Oh, then, Mr. Former, when you come back, there's much we have to talk about. Plans. Yeah. Campaigns. Ideas. The next steps. This is only the beginning, the dawn. It will be a long, long day. Yeah? Oh, come in. Ah, I thought it was you. You wouldn't listen to me, Ernst. On the contrary, I listened to all that I was able to stand. You should pay attention now. I can't even begin to tell you what's happened. It's too incredible. It's too unbelievable. I can tell you this much. We're on the march. From now on, we only go forward. There's no stopping us. No stopping you, Peter? An old man stopped you tonight with a few words. He stopped you with the truth. You're wrong, Ernst. It's not just me anymore. There's someone else. Someone behind us. Someone even you tremble at. Mm, he'd have to be a very imposing figure, Peter. Much more imposing than you. <sighs> oh... Oh, he is. He gave me this. See? More imposing even than a gun. That's only because you don't think I'll use it. Which only goes to show that you don't know me. I know you, Peter. I know you. From a ravaged little boy wanting love to a torn man looking for respect, identity, I don't feel you. So you may do what you have in mind at any time you wish. With this one last reminder. You can never kill an idea with a bullet. Never. No. No. I'm all steel now. Ernst, I'm made out of steel. No more sentiment. No more softness. Just purpose. Just will. Then shoot. Kill. Destroy me if you can. Am I close enough to you? Hmm? You're frightened. Admit it. Not at all. Impatient and a little bored. With living? With having to live in a time that produces people like you. Once, years ago, you made death inviting. You still do. So do me the goodness, Peter. Get it over with as quickly as possible. I'm waiting, Peter. Kill him, Volmer. Kill the old man. Kill the Jew. Use strength. Use will. Be made of steel, Volmer. Kill him! Kill him now! You see, Ernst? I told you. 
I told you! I'm made of steel! All steel. All strength. But at the expense of things that most other men have. Some fragments of decency that tell them right from wrong. That makes them... that make them love. Yes, Peter, you have steel, but now you have no heart. Where is everybody? Pete? We were just cleaning up. What happened to you? N nothing Nothing happened to me. You tell them. You go out there and you tell them. But they've all gone home. Tell them I'm still in charge. I'm number one. You serve, I lead. Understand? You serve, I lead. Come on, Pete. Let's go. No, he picked me. Out of everybody, he picked me. What's wrong? Don't you believe me? He did. He picked me. So long, Pete. See ya. Don't you walk away from me! Frank! Frank! Who's there? Who is that? Palmer? You. I... I did what you said. Sentimentality, Mr. Fulmer? None! Steel? Steel! And no regrets? None! What did you destroy tonight? Only a disease. A growth on our flesh that had to be removed. Not a man, then? No. Hardly a man. How did it feel? It felt... It felt like... I was immortal. <laughs> Mr. Volmer, we are immortal. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There he is. Don't move. What do you want? Peter Vollmer? Yes. We have a warrant for your arrest. That's impossible. The charge is conspiracy to commit murder. Your two friends are outside in cuffs. The victim's name was Nicholas Bloss. Uh, get away from me. He's got a gun. Drop the gun! Now! Walk toward us with your hands up! Hey, look, he's going to the other door. Tell them to cover the alley. Halt! Halt! Or I'll shoot! Hold it right there! We got him! He's hit! Call for an ambulance. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. There's something very wrong. <coughs> There's something very wrong. Easy, kid. Don't try to talk. But you... You made made a terrible mistake. I'm 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 made of steel. I, it's true. Don't you understand? I'm 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 made made of made of steel. I'm made of steel. I'm made of steel. I'm made of steel. Where will he appear next? This phantom from another time. This. Resurrected ghost of an old nightmare. Chicago, Los Angeles, Miami, Florida, perhaps. Vincennes, Indiana, Syracuse, New York. Any place, every place where there's hate, where there's prejudice, where there's bigotry. Because he's alive. He's alive so long as these evils exist. Remember that when he comes to your town. Remember it when you hear his voice speaking through the mouths of others, no matter who they may be. Remember it when you hear a name called a minority slander. Any blind, unreasoning attack on a people or any human being, he's alive. Because through these things, we keep him alive.
The Twilight Zone continues in just a moment. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop, twilightzoneradio.com. Visit twilightzoneradio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. 